Hey folks, what's up? Michael here and I'm going to talk to you in this video about a conundrum. You hate to cook and you want freshly cooked food without having to go out to get it. And to be clear, this is not only going to be helpful if you're a kitchen hater, but also if you find that you need a little extra help just making sure there's fresh food in the house without having to dedicate yourself to any kind of long in the kitchen cooking session every day. This is not going to be a video about not cooking. It's a video about removing the obstacles to cooking that may keep some of you from really getting started. If you hate the kitchen, this may not help you love it, but I assure you that if you start with this, if you start small, you may find yourself with a new perspective on the kitchen that gets you a little more excited about cooking your own food. So this video is gonna demonstrate how to introduce yourself to cooking in a way that removes as many of the obstacles that make cooking annoying or time consuming while still allowing you to have freshly cooked meals for lunch and dinner any day of the week. It's a bit of a primer on some basic techniques that put food on the table with little effort and high reward. Really good bang for your buck. So what kinds of things should you buy at the market as your starting point to make easy and fresh meals? Well, let's consider one of the main obstacles to even wanting to step foot in the kitchen to cook a meal, the prep that you have to do before you even fire up a burner, okay? So the first thing or category of things that you should buy when you shop are pre-prepared fresh foods. So vegetable prep can be one of the most unendearing tasks for the non-cook, so the first thing that are your friends are these pre-cut, washed, and bagged vegetables. You can get tons of stuff already prepped, cleaned, peeled, cut at the market. Things like broccoli, cauliflower, carrots. You can get squash that's already been cubed up for you. And these things you can just toss in a bowl with some oil, season it with some salt and pepper, put it into a preheated 425 degree oven. Now you can use a sheet pan, if, but if you don't have one, you can use, use a saute pan. Now things like broccoli and cauliflower will take about 25 minutes. Carrots and squash, 40 to 45. They're done. You have hot, fresh, roasted veggies. Drizzle with a little olive oil. If you're ambitious, sprinkle with some chopped herbs. Then you've got things like peas, green beans, snow peas, snap peas, already ready for you to cook. You just drop these guys into some boiling water, salted water for about two minutes, drain them, toss them with some olive oil or butter, again, some herbs if you want, squeeze a little lemon, a dash of vinegar, season up with some salt and pepper, and you're ready to go. Now, if you bring home any of these bagged or pre-prepped lettuces, any of these vegetables can be combined with those to make a great salad, especially if you add other simple ingredients like nuts or seeds, a little dried fruit. I got olives here. You can also keep other prepared foods like these olives or like uh, already roasted peppers in a jar that you can just throw into any salad. And remember, a standard of vinaigrette is easy. One part vinegar, three parts oil. That's a teaspoon of vinegar and a tablespoon of oil. Add a drop of mustard, a little salt and pepper, and whisk it together and you're ready to go. Now this is stuff that you can get fresh in the produce section. For me, I tend to stay away from frozen, not because it's not good, but when I buy frozen food, it mostly sits in the freezer. I never see it, so I rarely use it. Okay, so now the other thing you can bring home, and this might be surprising, is some large roastable pieces of meat. Tri-tip, which I have here, sirloin roast, top round roast, eye of round roast, pork loin. These are all cuts you can simply season and stick into the oven. These are not the tougher, longer cooking pot roasts like your chuck roast or your brisket that you need a slow cooker for. These are fairly tender already and don't need a long cook to make them edible. These larger roasts have a few advantages. They really do allow for mostly hands-off cooking. You don't have to sear them in a pan like a steak and hope that you don't burn the outside before you cook the inside. There's no splattering all over your stove. And maybe, best of all, you have leftovers when you cook something large. And again, you just salt and pepper, throw it into a 300 to a 350 degree oven until the temperature hits 120, pull it out, crank up the oven to its highest temperature and stick that meat back in for six to 10 minutes until you get a nice color on it and you are done. You don't even need a special pan. Again, a, a standard oven safe saute pan as long as it fits the meat. Five to 10 minutes of resting on the counter and you can cut it and eat it. Another solid standby is a roast chicken. It might seem a little bit daunting. Chickens are a little all over the place, 
but it's a simple classic that anybody can handle. Again, you rub the skin with a little oil, a little salt and pepper, and into a preheated 450 degree oven, three to four pound chicken is done in 50 minutes. Pull it, rest it, and eat it. You don't even need to do any fancy tying up the le of the legs. That's actually gonna make the legs take longer to cook, which is the last thing you want. You don't want the breast to be done and drying out while your legs are struggling to reach their final internal temperature. People tie it up because it looks pretty on the table, but this ain't Thanksgiving. You're gonna pull those legs right off the body and you're gonna eat them anyway. Now, one thing I will always insist on when you're cooking meat is a good thermometer. If you don't have one, get one. At least an instant read digital pen thermometer. But if you're really into it, you get a probe thermometer which can stay in the meat while it's in the oven so you can rely on actual up to the minute temperature rather than guessing how long it's gonna take to finish. So there you are, a few things to get you started in the kitchen even if you don't like the idea of it. With just a few things like these already prepped vegetables, strategically selected piece of meat, some garnish ingredients like nuts, dried fruit, olives, and other jarred ingredients, you can enjoy lunches and dinners with a whole variety of roasted vegetables, blanched and seasoned vegetables, roasted meats, simple salads. One of the best rewards that you can get in doing the whole life challenge is an introduction to learning to cook for yourself. Thousands of people have gained a whole new appreciation of and a whole new level of skill in the kitchen by taking on the simple act of preparing healthy food for themselves in the challenge. And even if you already know how to cook, making new dishes regularly during the challenge will level you up and give you a whole new sense of creativity and what's possible when you know how to interact with your kitchen. So that is it for my simple introduction to cooking even when you don't like it. Thanks for hanging out. Let me know down in the comments what you do to keep cooking simple and fresh for yourself and your family. And I'll see you next time.